A hand scrambled out of the desert, and then a man covered a mud climbed to his feet. His armor had been corroded and covered in rust. He was named Baba Fed, as the descendant of the Andalorians Baba was once the strongest bounty hunter in the galaxy. Three years ago, he was swallowed by a star beast, perhaps thanks to the protection of the battle armor. He survived death. After waking up, he broke the beast's guts with a punch and used fire to open the way for him. It took a lot of hard work to get out of the hot desert, but he soon fainted because of physical exhaustion and waited until night. When a tank suddenly came and several greedy earth elves came down from it, they took a fancy to Baba's battle armor and robbed the armor without mercy. They also knocked the man unconscious with a stick. The next day, Baba had been tied to a stake. His skin was corroded by the behemoth's gastric juices and was very unsightly. At this point, one of the sand people poked him tentatively to see if he was alive. They used sandworms to give Baba additional strength. The sand people are the natives here in this desert. They would treat the captured aliens as slaves. At this point, Baba looked more like a monster to them. They beat the man first. The weakened Baba then passed out. At night, Baba woke up to find that he was once again tied up. After looking around he finds that there is only a desert dog staring at them. At the same time, he is next to the Martian who has just been captured. They look at each other and then have an idea. When the desert dog fell asleep, Baba began to try to break free from the rope. The desert dog woke up instantly. Baba didn't pay attention to it. He continued to accelerate the friction of the rope. The desert dog could not stand to see it immediately pounced. Baba was very agile. He took the opportunity to hammer the Martian into unconsciousness. At this point, the desert dog's sharp teeth quickly cut the rope. Baba looked next to the alien was quite pathetic. Did not expect him to be a coward. The Sandman rushed to run but was knocked down by Baba. He looked at the enemy as a small child. Baba's sympathy for him did not hit him very hard. The other clansmen came to hear the sound, and Baba had to run away. At that time, the desert dog also just woke up, but his two legs could not run for legs after all, and soon was chased by the desert dog pounced on the ground. By this time, a large force of the sand tribe had arrived. The next day, the sand people took them forward to the water station to change the water. Because of last night's escape, this time they put chains on the men. When they arrived at the water station but was shocked, the place had been robbed empty, not forgetting to leave their proud mark. Failing to fetch water, the sand people had to pull them through the desert to dig for watermelons, and the desert dog led them to a sandy area. The sand people instructed them to start digging. However, Baba did not know what this meant. Only after the sand people took out the watermelon did he understand that there was a drinkable watermelon under the lifeless sand. They dug in this way until the afternoon, but the sand people slept comfortably on the side. Baba, the god of war, now has to work under the scorching sun of more than 90 degrees. The sand people would rather give the water to the dogs than share a sip to Baba. Baba was very angry. Next to the Martian, he suddenly dug up a pitch black strange thing. In order to satisfy his curiosity, he kept speeding up to dig down, but unexpectedly dug up a big monster as a result. The tribe sensed a danger signal in the distance and immediately got nervous. When they looked clearly, they realized that the visitor was Baba, who had returned in triumph. Since Baba eliminated the desert beast, he gained the trust of the foot-killing tribe. Last night, he went to the tavern alone, single-handedly, to defeat the Peedster gang and brought back their high-tech equipment. He was ready to lead the tribe to fight a high-tech version of the Railroad Guerrilla War. After a series of tactical synergies, the Pike's train finally zipped out of control into the desert. With smoke and dust everywhere, this desert train was finally stopped. Baba also reached an agreement with the Pike people. Every time they passed through the desert to pay the road toll to the sand people. However, several months passed and the Pikes kept defaulting on the promised road fees. For this reason Baba decided to fight them himself. He rode alone on a big melt yak from the depths of the desert to the Pike country. When he negotiated he realized that things were not as simple as he thought. The Pike spoke very perfectly. He outwardly treated Baba with great respect privately, but wanted to kill him. He stated that the road money was collected by the speedy gang and there was nothing he could do about it. He wanted Baba to negotiate with the biker gang about the road fees. The Pike said so perfectly that Baba had to leave for the time being. He intended to return to the tribe to replan. What he didn't expect was the smoke he saw just as he reached the edge of the tribe. Baba was very nervous. When he arrived at the tribe, the scene broke his heart very much. The formerly lively tribe was now in ruins, and none of the sand people had survived. When he saw the markings on the tent, he realized that it was the work of the speeders. It was a conspiracy. 
he had underestimated the ruthlessness of the pikes and the spears after all. This was a very dangerous thing to do. Baba was both angry and bitter. And now he just wanted revenge. He buried the sand people according to the tribe's ritual. Then he set out on the road to revenge with the tribe's only remaining neck. Halfway there, he suddenly saw an inexplicable distress signal, so he rushed over to check it out. After coming to find a dying woman, he hurriedly took him to the mechanical transformation. Here, he is an extremely good reformer, can transform a dying person into a semi-robot. After the mechanical parts were put together, with the sound of machine drills and sparks spurting, he began to turn the tools into argon wells, put in all kinds of small and large bearings, and rebuild the tendons. When all the parts were installed, he then turned the key power on. The woman instantly came to life, and a perfect transformed man was done. When he saw his body turned into a semi-machine, he could not help but be shocked. What did you do to me? This woman's origin was extremely uncomplicated. She has a loud name, Anna, but also a powerful bounty hunter. In order to repay Baba for saving her life, she was willing to assist Baba to retrieve the airship and armor. Next, Baba, the god of war, is ready to wage a war of revenge against the flying car game. This is an extremely mysterious unmanned detector, which is as silent as a mosquito, diving into the precise scanning of every place in the cave. Soon, he recorded the entire cave terrain layout all. After the projection of the cave's enemy distribution were all clearly scouted, before the action, Baba worried that there would be an accident. He wanted to put the tribe's only remaining big mouthed yak back into the desert, but the yak could not let go of Baba. Finally, Baba had to use the chicken leg to coax the yak away. Next, they planned to enter through the sewer but saw an arm thick, iron tiller. He was very confused when Anna took out his body of high tech easily saw the problem. The robots in the kitchen are busy cooking, but the manhole cover is born to catch the attention of the robots. What was that? I don't know more rats. After Bob climbed in, the robot changed from shift to fighting state. What he didn't expect was for Anna to cut his connection directly behind him in one move. At this point, a rat catching cat came in. Baba wanted to catch it to interrogate the situation. But unexpectedly, it is very smart directly turned off his power. Baba also can do nothing. After coming to the cabin, Baba saw his beloved ship was shut here. Eyes could not help but moisten up. When he started the ship, the movement attracted a large number of inciting guards. If he did not leave, it would be too late. At the critical moment, he shot off the counterweight every 100 steps. The gate was instantly opened and Baba could finally fly again. Got the airship back. The first thing he had to do was to take revenge. The flying car gang is flaunting their power in the desert because they are the overlords in the desert. At this time, they came behind a ship, Baba with action to tell the speed gang what is revenge. He gave vent to his long pent up anger with a volley of shots and the flying car gang was almost wiped out. The last one left ready to escape but also cannot escape the palm of Baba a small missile directly to turn it into ashes. This moment Baba finally for the sand people revenge. After this experience, Baba understand that he wants to become strong. He came to the initial place swallowed by the star beast to retrieve his lost battle armor. Previously lost things he had to get back one by one and to become stronger than before. However, the giant beast seemed to have no breath left, but in fact he was still alive, waiting for the airship to approach. He firmly grabbed the airship then smashed heavily to the ground. At the moment of crisis, Anna helped him again. A missile fell from the airship, just in time to fall into the hole and be swallowed by the giant beast. In the middle of the night, they are ready to kill the city lord and he takes his place. Anna was also convinced by his charm agreed to join. They infiltrated the city in the middle of the night and succeeded in killing the city lord outright. From then on, Baba officially became the Lord of Aduin. However, the city is not simple. It is composed of a variety of aliens interstellar city, a variety of intricate forces. Behind the city, there are bigger challenges waiting for Baba.